Welcome to the Indie Resources second video in how to build a browser based MUD slash MMO. Um, in the last video, we set up the server. We uh, got our WAMP server running, we got Node.js running, and we just left off where we needed to add now jQuery and our Bootstrap. So before we get into that, I want to make sure everybody understood where to go for questions and answers and things like that. If you go to Indie Resource, I created a um, new folder in here if you just go to YouTube tutorials and then you will see real-time browser-based MMO you'll see the videos pile up in here um, which I just created it so with that out of the way let's go ahead and add our jQuery and our bootstrap to our project so we downloaded the files and we put them in our modules folder and so now we just need to have index reference them our index.html so if we grab our whatever code editor you're using open it up op open up our index.html I'm using Visual Studio so I'm just gonna drag it in there so this index.html is what came with um, Hall's node and basically it's just set up for um, Hall's node there's it's got one CSS sheet that's defining what's happening currently but we need to go ahead and add everything else in there so the easiest way to do it is let's start with our CSS sheet let's just copy this CSS sheet and if we go into our modules we know we need our bootstrap.min CSS so if you just click on that where you can rename it you can copy it come in here to your style sheet now it's we put it in the modules folder so we need to go ahead and make sure it knows to go into modules I can spell right so that takes care of that and then now we need to add come down here and just copy this and we paste that in and then we come back and we go to our bootstrap we need to we need to both add jQuery and bootstrap now bootstrap uses jQuery so we actually need to, to um, make sure that jQuery runs first before a bootstrap so let's grab it first you do not have to add the reference to the map it's actually referenced inside the jQuery file so we will just put this right here and then we'll come back and grab our bootstrap which I guess I should have copied this first and we add that Oop, I goofed it okay so now and the CSS doesn't really matter because it's gonna it's just gonna load the CSS um, so it's it's fine without it this is where it's gonna reference the CSS so with those two loaded we now have jQuery and our bootstrap ready and, and to test it what we can do is we can go ahead and go back and we can start our server so go back to your server.bat start it up get it fired up and then go to your browser and <clears throat> we can refresh now a good way to check just make sure everything's loading is hit your F12 key make sure you're on console if you're in Google Chrome I'm gonna use Google Chrome for everything I'm not gonna use IE or or Mozilla which you can use Mozilla it's fine I wouldn't recommend IE but inside the console we got no errors so we know everything's loading just fine but the button didn't really change well it's it's basically bootstrap is class based so we would just have to change the class on it so if we go back to our browser and we go over to bootstrap you'll see they, they put in a bunch of examples here so let's say we want to just change it here if we just copy this class and we go into if we we look at our button right here and we just attach that class to the button and if for those of you who never dealt with classes or or especially CSS3 and its classes I'll explain them all later there's no point kinda of going through it right now but basically what this is doing for a quick example is the class is just defining CSS you can define a class that basically sets up uh, let's just call them perimeters for now that will define whatever object that is and for the in this case it's a button object it's going to since we define this class inside of bootstrap bootstrap is defining that button on how it looks what color it is all that kind of stuff so that way you don't actually have to define every single feature inside that button every time you do it you just define that class and it automatically attaches every single feature of that class onto that button so if we save that and we go back and re refresh you'll see that that button has now changed now of course it fell off because this is some terrible CSS work done here but we're gonna go and fix that but you can see that it changed the button so we know that our, everything is set up properly we got no errors here and we're good to go <clears throat> so now I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of that for now and save it 
So now a little explanation of what's going on with our server and our client so you understand that before we go too much further into this. Um, so let's start with we with our index.html we have where we're defining our socket IO where it's looking for the socket or local host 8080. Now what that is is because we're on a local host we're, we're using the port 80 for our actual um, web browser for actually our client so we can't really use that for the server so we use 8080 so the server uses 8080 and then the client uses 80 so it's not a, a port confliction there. Um, we can actually change our title now to mud game or whatever we want to call it um, which you know more than I think about it we probably use less mud features than real-time MMO so we can just call it MMO game. Um, we have the original style sheet that came from Hall's node. We're going to keep that in there for now. We may change it in the course of definitions we just did. And then we have our actual um, IO Connect uh, localhost 8080. This is where the client is actually connecting to the server. The player name, if you notice, there was a um, there was the random player name, which I can go to real quick. It has player this, so it's random. Real simplistic, and all it did was create a variable. Now, for those of you that are new to JavaScript, let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and create a new JavaScript file here, and I probably should have created it outside of here. Let's do this. Let's go into our folder. Let's go to new text file, and we will just call this um, example.js. And yes. Okay, so if we drag that in here, <clears throat> we have a, we now have a JavaScript file. Which it does not want to open, so let's open file and we'll just open up our JavaScript. It's not really important that you that you do this. I'm just kind of trying to show an example here real quick. Um, <clears throat> so with JavaScript, and there is a difference between Java and JavaScript. There's complete difference, totally different. It's not the same thing. So you have variables and you define them with var, and variable is nothing more than a container that holds data. So it, and for if, if most likely if you know C sharp you, you pretty much are comfortable with with uh, C, uh, with JavaScript so there's no point in really defining this but in in languages like C sharp and C you have to actually define whether it is an, an integer or whether it is a string or anything like that but with JavaScript it's you can pretty much just say var and it, it'll pretty much detect itself so if you do var and then you name the variable let's just say a equals <clears throat> let's do something a little better that's more game related let's say strength equals 18 then that now that variable is now strength and to give you an example of this we could actually do an example right here inside this script body right here is anything run inside here because this is an HTML file this is our index.html this is running only HTML well if you define this script type equals text JavaScript anything run in between these two script tags it knows that it's JavaScript so if we do the same thing we do var strength equals 18 we've now defined that strength equals 18 and to show that we could do an alert strength and it should give us 18 so if we save that we go back we refresh you'll see that it pops up and says 18 so it's basically just fine it. and it's the same way with a string it'll know that it's a string so if we come back and change this to um, to let's just say strength we save that and we refresh it's going to be the same thing so when we're going through variables that's all they really are they're just containers that that hold a number in you know I'm probably 99 percent of you already probably already know this but I'm just being sure to go over it so you could even do um, you can even do math inside of it and that of course is going to give us 19 so it's it's pretty simplistic when it comes to that <clears throat> with your actual variables and variables and everything you also have functions which are basically just you can call them methods or functions but JavaScript calls them functions and um, get strength Oops. so let's just do get strength and these are basically when you run them it runs anything inside these two and that drives me nuts where it puts my bracket back up here um, it runs anything inside these two brackets so here we could say strength equals 18 now if you notice we should now let's alert this real quick. Strength. 
So now you would think it's going to show 18, but it's actually not. It's going to give a strength is not defined because we never actually called this function. So if we go before our alert and we call that function, it, so when, when this hits, it'll actually come up here and say, oh, this is a function. It'll run this, and then it'll come down and run this. So if we go back and refresh. Um, looks like we actually got, hold on one sec. Let me double check. Okay, whoops, no wonder. Could help if I spelt it right. Get strength. And then there you go, it's actually defining it now. So, of course, that's not all of JavaScript, not even close, but that's a quick definition just as we go through some of these some of these files so you understand what it's actually doing. Let me go ahead and close this off, hit no, and I'll just delete that out of there because we, we won't really use that right now. Um, so, so that's that's basically what we're doing here. Var randed math.floor is just a function that actually randomizes any number you want, and I'm just randomizing uh, 9,999, so it adds it to it. And then what I'm doing is I'm just adding player plus whatever this randomizes, and that's what gives us that number. Um, then we come down and we include the client um, chat.js. So anytime you include a file like this, it's going to include everything that's inside that file. So if we go to modules, we go to client, and we actually grab that chat.js and we look at it. For some reason this is not wanting to take it, so let's just do an open file, modules, client, chat.js. So I tried to put as much um, commenting in here. I probably went over on some of the commenting, um, but at least it's understandable. So here's some of our socket functions. I'm not going to get into socket functions yet because we actually have to get into Node.js to understand how sockets work and the back and forth, but they're very simplistic. As a matter of fact, for most of you that have been scared of socket, uh, or I'm sorry, Node.js, you're actually going to laugh on how simplistic it is um, when it comes to just sockets. Um, so basically this is just defining, and, and I'm going to scoot through this kind of quick right now, but we will come back to it. But basically I'm just defining, and you can, call them, you can almost call them functions in a way, to where the server and the client just calls functions back and forth to each other. So if the client, in this case, add player, the client is telling the server to add player. So when this, when the, when the, and let me go back to actual index.html and I'll show you where it starts. Um, we do a, let me, okay, here we go. So whenever we're doing a socket.emit initialize player player name. What this is doing is this is telling the server to initialize the player and then I'm passing the player name which is that variable here and because we define define the variable up here this is this script because it run next is already going to know this. It's going to be a part of this whole program. So when we go back to our chat, it's actually calling to the server initialize player and if we open up our server Actually, it's the app.js that we defined earlier that starts up. So if we go into our app.js, and if you remember, that's where we called our server.bat. We told Node to open this file. So this is what's running on the server. Pull it here. Open. Um, and we'll go through a lot of the server stuff later, so don't get scared by it. But the one thing I want you to notice is the socket.on. So what this is, is this says, if a client talks to me and it passes that initialized player, which that's what the, the client is doing, then it's then it run this function and it's everything with in between these brackets. Um, and whatever we pass to it is going to now turn into a variable. So we pass that player name and then I'm calling a new player name here, but all it's doing is it's... it's this is that player name that we passed. I'm just defining it as a new name so I don't confuse myself. So it passes the name. We then do socket.client name, which we'll go through later. And we create I created a JavaScript array that just holds the player names. And then each each client that attach that, that starts up with the with the um, on the server, it automatically defines it a socket ID. And that's the server and the client shares those two IDs. And all I'm doing is I created another array that stores that socket ID. So once it, once it does that and we've said, okay, we've stored the client ID and the player name on the server so we know who they are, then it goes back and it does an IO sockets.emit. And what that does is that talks to anything, anytime it does the IO sockets, it talks to all sockets. So every client that's attached that has a socket ID, it then speaks back to it and does a add player. So if you go back to your chat.js, you'll see the client also has a... 
um, also has a function called or a socket dot on called add player and then it's the other player name so it passed the name back to the client and then it just does okay this player joined and then it does the message list of the current current messages going on so that that's how it adds players the client says tells the server hey I joined the server then speaks back out to everyone except for the original client that's one, one thing I want to say the IO sockets dot emit will speak to everybody but the person who talked to it so you would want to do broadcast and we'll get into that later too the socket broadcast dot emit is where it speaks to um, or it speaks back differently but we'll, we'll go over that in a minute so with IO sockets dot emit it added the player and then it's told the client okay go ahead and add player and then the client does its little deal to add it now if you notice there's one other thing that happens it also does get users so it comes back down and and actually this is going to speak to everyone this speaks to everyone in the list there's ways to speak to everyone in the list but the person who talked to it and then only the person that talked to it and we'll of course get into that in a minute so if we go back to chat.js we also have remove player that it will speak to it and remove it out get users this is where it actually tells all the clients hey get the users and you'll have to excuse these little the way these brackets are um, visual studio automatically puts them like that drives me nuts but and then, then it calls back get server users where it gets the server list and then it, it actually adds the player list and that's how you see the player list. It does a, um, it basically defines that inside that div, <clears throat> um, how many players are in the list because it just passes back a array, a player list array from the server. And like I said, we'll get into that a little more, but I just want to make sure everybody understood how these were speaking back to forth, back and forth, and how the current setup is, because we're going to change this quite dynamically. It's not going to be the original, the way you see it now, as far as that goes. Now, one quick thing before I end the video, now that I, I, I understand that I didn't go completely through all of the modules in here with, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, the, all the server and client modules, because a lot of this stuff, like the commands.js, um, this is what we'll get into later because these are actually commands that are being sent back and forth. And to give you an example, these automatically come with with the Hall's node um, that I wrote. So this is all this stuff set up when it passes north, south. You can lumber things like that. This was stuff I put in here just in case people want to add to it. And we'll eventually go into this, but I, we're not going to go into it right now. So don't worry, we will get into it. But I want to make sure everybody understood when they see socket I/O and and all that other stuff how that stuff kind of works. So in between videos you can kind of look this stuff up yourself and that's basically going to do it for this video the next video we're actually going to work on twitter bootstrap and how the rows and spans work um, it's really neat how the system works and it makes things a lot simpler for us and then once we get that we'll, we'll kind of make this screen a little prettier as far as the index.html and get things situated there and start putting in some commands and things like that